Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah, and today we are talking about the golden question. If you could go back in time to your younger, brand new DMing self, what is the one piece of advice that you would give yourself that could change everything. I asked this question to my Discord members and also to my YouTube community and you guys came up with some real gems. So we're going to look at the answers that you gave and I'm going to give you a few of my own. So if you are a brand new DM, here is what we veterans want you to know. And if you're a veteran DM watching this, do you agree with these? Or do you have something else you would tell your younger self? Please make sure to put it in the comments down below. And here we go. All right, humanoids, before we get started with this question, check out my shirt. This one is from this incredible shop that I actually favorited because she has some amazing designs and I absolutely love them. So this holiday season, if you're looking to give a gift to a D&D player, maybe consider shopping small. Do a small business. Etsy is a great place for that. That's why we're highlighting these things. I've ordered two new items. One of them's from Poland, so it may take a little bit to get here, but we'll look at a couple of items as well, not just t-shirts, but I do love this t-shirt. The design is super cool. It's really soft. It's already gone through the wash like four times and it's holding up really good. So this is a big halfling thumbs up for a t-shirt if you're looking to give one to a D&D player. So now let's get into our question today. What advice would you give your brand new DMing self? First up we have, you are an important part of the table. Your fun is just as important as your players. I think there's this concept in the D&D world that the DM is like the martyr of the group. They're the ones who's willing to give up their fun and willing to give up their free time so that everyone else can have fun. And this is simply not true. Like, this is supposed to be a fun game for everyone involved. If you're not having fun or the mere idea of it does not sound like fun to you, then don't do it. Hire a DM online or do some any anything else, literally anything else. Because if you're not having fun, your players aren't going to have fun. And that's no fun. <laughs> you should be having fun too. Next up, we have my atrium who says, you as the DM are the ultimate rules referee and you call the shots, not the rule book. Knowing the rules back to front is not a requirement, but simply being consistent and fair with how you rule things is all you need. This is absolutely 100% true and I wish I would have known this. I was so concerned about knowing all of these rules, this entire book full of rules that I was stressing out hardcore before my first game when I realized that honestly, you don't need that many rules. If you don't know the rules, simply come up with something that seems right and fair in the moment and go with that. Really, all you need is the player sheet with all of their stats to roll and a basic idea of how combat works and you'll be perfectly fine. Don't stress about knowing every single rule and don't be afraid to make up rules or come up with rules for unique situations. It's much better to come up with a rule on the fly than stop the entire game Game to look in the rule book. That's not fun. I used to do that, by the way. I'm so sorry to my first group of players. That was, that was not good. Here's another one that's really great. This one's for combat from Herbal. Adjust if it's too easy, too hard, or takes too long, etc. Adapt if they do something you didn't think about, and accept that it's a fluid cooperation game. Things will not go according to your plans, and that's okay. This is phenomenal, such great advice, and so absolutely true. If combat's taking too long and it's inevitable that the monster's gonna die, take those extra hit points off. Who cares? They don't know. And if it's too easy, add in a few more monsters or beef up that monster, come up with an ability on the fly. They're never gonna know that it wasn't there the whole time. And some of my best moments have come when I've done this, when I've just adjusted to the situation that was at hand. I also love about adapting and accepting. There is, like, you need to plan. That is a part of it. You do need to plan as the DM, but you don't have to plan for everything. Your players, I guarantee, are going to fill in those gaps, and they're going to do things that you never would have expected. Trust me. My Trim also says, Google is your friend. There are lots of awesome resources out there to help you as the DM. You don't have to buy every single book. Google has lots of resources for you. 
I'm trying really hard not to plug my Patreon because I make resources for you too. But there's a lot of there's a lot of other DMs out there that make really awesome uh, resources. Um, Drive through RPG, uh, Patreon, all these places are great places to find resources to help with your campaign. We have another one that says compliments in public corrections in private. And this is so, so true. Make sure that you are constantly telling your players what they did well. My favorite way to do that is through the inspiration system, but you know, that's up to you. Uh, but compliment them, tell them what they're doing good, tell them what you like and enjoy. And if there's any corrections that need to be made, make sure to do it in private and not in front of everybody. Here's another one from Herbal. She has some great ideas. It's okay to do an error, to be wrong, making mistakes. It's okay to not know something. It's okay to go, oh, okay, I didn't realize it was explained like that in the DMG. I'll run it like we started, but I'll read up on it for next time. Oh, this is so huge. Be okay with not knowing. Yes, you're the ultimate set of rules, but you're human and it's okay to not know what it is that uh, the rule should be and to just simply say that. And if your player does happen to know what that rule is, um, I'm really bad about this because I've been a DM for a while, I know a lot of the rules, and so if I'm playing in a campaign and the DM doesn't seem to know what to do, I will offer what the rule is. But realize that it's okay to take that from your players, but it's also okay to say, in this campaign, I think we're gonna run it like this and to stick with your original idea if you think it's more fair. In the end, it comes down to what is fair, not what is right. And oftentimes what is right is not fair. And so just keep that in mind when you're uh, DMing. Sage Kane has one, I love this one. Having a plot is different from a railroad and it's okay to have a plot. Oh my gosh, there are like two camps. When you're um, starting to be a DM, there's like two camps and you don't know which one to go to. There's the never plan anything because it restricts your player's freedoms camp. And then there's the plan a book and then maybe adapt that book depending on what your players do, but the book still happens over here. Here, and I think the healthy space is in the middle. Have a plot. Have a villain who has an idea of what they want to do in your world. Have world events happen regardless of what your players do, but also adapt to what your players do in that world. They should have an impact on the world and on your plot, but it is good and right to have a plot. And I'm a firm believer that every DM should have a plot to their campaign. If you're running a pre-written adventure, they have plots. All of them have plots, so it must be something good for your campaign. Now, that being said, don't over plan. Over planning can make you go insane trying to plan for every single contingency. That's a little bit different. You need to have an overall idea of maybe where your players are going and what might happen there, but don't try to plan out every single building in the city. Sweetie, you're gonna go crazy. I've been there. I've been down that rabbit hole. That rabbit hole don't go nowhere. It's not good for you. Let it go, okay? Let it go. All right, moving over to the YouTube community. Here we have Dragon Shade Studio said the biggest revelation as a DM was cluing in that the rules are too broad for any one person to reasonably memorize, and it's okay to take the ones that aren't fun and just not use them. There certainly was an early struggle to try and find and achieve some kind of system fidelity in using the entirety of the third edition rule set. Oh, God bless you. Oh man, that would be insane. Believing that it was there to enhance the game or in some way to be more fair. Absolutely 100% true. You're not gonna know every rule. It's not gonna happen. Stop trying. Don't hurt yourself. Now, as you do this for a long time, you kind of absorb rules as you go, as you learn, um, as situations come up and you'll remember those. But there's gonna be ones that you never remember. I have a whole video on it because still, to this day, there are rules I don't remember. The rule for falling, no idea. No clue what I'm supposed to roll. I just grab a handful of dice, depending on how big of a fall it is, and that's how much damage happens. I don't know that rule. I don't know the rule for jumping. Like, I have no idea. Jack's probably gonna put it up here because he does, he's good at this, and I still don't know. I still don't know the rule for jumping and I never will. Don't try and make me Jack, it's not gonna happen. The next one is excellent from Solombria. 
So sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. You know I can't do that. After reading all the core rule books, God bless you. You really did? I haven't done that. After reading all the core rule books back to front before my first game, within 30 minutes of starting to play, realized pretty much the entire game can be run by calling for the skill checks and saving throws on the character sheet, along with the basic combat rules, spell attacks, and conditions. And those can be learned in 30 minutes. Everything else is optional complexity. Yes. Yes, I don't know what else to say, yes. Know your combat, um, make sure your players know their spells and you know how the spells kind of work. Action economy is important. Other than that, no, you don't need the rest of it. Just don't, don't even, don't even worry about it. Here's one from Cat Jordan. The money issue is a real hurdle. In the 80s, we were broke and we used bottle caps on a battle mat with beads for monsters. I carefully collected a couple of boxes for monster minis. Now as a DM, I'm very conscientious of how expensive it can get. That is 100% true. The, the whole comment's longer than that. Make sure you go to the community post to see it. But yes, it can be expensive to be the DM, but it doesn't have to be. You do not need to spend a fortune on books and miniatures and maps to be a good DM. I wish I would have known this. It took me a long time to actually get into the hobby of being a DM because I thought I had to spend a ton of money and I couldn't do that at the time. If you don't have a dime to spend on D&D, you don't have to. You can still be a great DM without spending any money on all of those resources, and you can compile them a little bit at a time. Our next one is from Brienne. It says, session zero is necessary. Create a safe place. Absolutely agree. I didn't know what a session zero was when I first started my campaign, and we just jumped right into the story. The characters had no idea who each other were. It took forever to get them together. It took them even longer to get them to care. And most of them asked me a few sessions in, can I change my class or can I change this backstory? Because it just, it isn't flowing. It isn't fitting right. And a session zero would have fixed all of that. Twilight Gardens presentation says, my guys are veterans of decades and still forget I'm a gamer playing with them, not an entertainer playing for them. Dang, that's a good quote. Yes, goes back to you should be having fun too. You should be playing with them and enjoying it. You're not there for everyone else's entertainment. You're not, you shouldn't spend all of your own money and you shouldn't spend every second of your time preparing for this to entertain people. If that's what you want to do because you enjoy it, that's completely different. That's what I do, but you don't have to. This shouldn't feel like a burden. It should feel like a game because it's supposed to be a game. <laughs> don't, don't make it more than uh, what it's supposed to be. And then finally, one of my favorites is from Tusk that says, ain't nobody got all that money to buy every book if you want to check it out. Yes, just yes. They release way too many books, in my opinion, in 5e. They're, they're just, there are too many. And I buy like every one of them because I do this. Um, so I kind of feel like I have to. But you don't. You don't. You can borrow books. You can find the gist of things online to see if you really actually want to spend the money on it. Um, there are some great digital bundles that you can get for different things. Don't feel like you have to buy every book in 5e. You don't. As a matter of fact, you can pretty much just buy the starter set and be good to go and not buy anything else if you don't want to. Finally, we're going to end with just a few of my own. First up, you're not Matt Mercer. Stop trying to be. We put way too much pressure on ourselves to be this incredible S tier level dungeon master. And quite honestly, we're not, I'm not. And you don't have to be to have a good time with your friends. Stop putting all this pressure on yourself. You don't have to be Matt Mercer. Lean into what you are good at. Matt is great at creating worlds. What are you good at? Perhaps you're better at simply adding and adjusting existing worlds to being something truly amazing. Lean into that and do that. Number two, you will never be perfect. And that's great because perfect is boring. 
I have a problem with trying to be perfect in everything that I do, and it drives me insane sometimes. And when I realized that I will never be the perfect DM is when I started having fun being the DM again. And some of the best moments in my sessions have come from me not having a clue what I'm supposed to do and adapting on the fly. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. Was it hilarious and memorable? 100%. Stop putting so much pressure on yourself. You're gonna be just fine. You're not gonna be perfect, but you're gonna be just fine. Number three, you don't have to do voices. I'm terrible at voices, terrible at accents. This voice is pretty much all you get and variations of this voice. <laughs> you don't have to do the voices. My players have never once complained that Strahd sounds like a white woman. <laughs> Never once, amazingly. Uh, don't know why. Uh, but you can do so much just through body language and through the way that you present yourself without changing anything to do with your voice. Stop stressing about that. If you enjoy it and it's your strength, lean into it. If you don't, you can still be a great DM. Four, it's perfectly fine to use names you can pronounce. It doesn't take away from the fantasy field. I spent forever trying to learn how to pronounce all of these cool fantasy sounding names, only to realize my players didn't understand them any more than I did, had just a hard time writing them down, as I did, and couldn't pronounce them either. So what's the point? What's the point? Just to sound fantasical? Fantasical? That's not a word. Fanificial? Fan fantasy? Fantastical, just to sound fantastical? No, no, that's that's no fun. Just, it's okay to just use names that you can pronounce. For example, in Curse of Strahd, my players uh, encountered Binksley and his monkey, uh, and I could not remember what the monkey's name was actually supposed to be, so I named it Kevin, and they love it. They absolutely love it. They think it's the funniest thing. They bring up Kevin all the time because it's the one freaking name in Curse of Straw that they can all pronounce. <laughs> What's wrong with that? So whatever culture that you are in, use names that you can pronounce. There's nothing wrong with that. And then finally, the last piece of advice I wish I could have given myself and that I will give to you is that you are going to be a great DM. You're not gonna be perfect. You're not going to be everything that you imagine, but you're gonna be great and you're gonna have fun with your friends and it's all gonna be okay. I certainly hope that this helps to give your game advantage. And until next time, my friends, Happily and Hannah here, signing out. If you want a little help giving your game advantage, then you can head on over to Patreon, where I post lots of DM resources every single week. All of these amazing people on this list right here are my incredible patrons who are the producers for these YouTube videos. Thank you guys so, so much for believing in Halfling Hobbies and, you know, partnering with us. I couldn't do this without you. Thanks for indulging me when I ask you questions and hanging out and playing one shots with me. I love you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye. This can be learned in 30 minutes and everything else is optional complexity. Dang it. That's my dryer.